Thank you very much aligners for your company and welcome back to your channel Transmission Lines Engineering TV. Well, step by step we are going deeper and deeper into the technical topics. I hope that uh, what we have talked in the previous videos is useful for you guys. That's my basic wish. Well, uh, let's talk about the calculation philosophy for a right away, which uh, mathematically speaking it's not complicated, it's nothing more than a calculation of a simple arithmetic and basic trigonometry. The magic in the calculation of a error way is based more on climatic conditions where there is wind involved, the geometry of the structures and the design considerations which might vary from client to client and country to country. But in essence, it is the same calculation philosophy. We will start by identifying the starting data for its calculation. So, as number one, we have the identifications of those uh, sections of the line which uh, have restrictions on the right away due to limitations to the permits uh, seen in the previous video. As number two, we have the geometry of the suspension structures. Why suspension ones? Simple. They are the ones that uh, will be most used in any transmission line project. As number three, we have the overall dimensions of the suspension hardware assemblies. Number four, we need to know the so-called name it ruling span which uh, we will talk about it uh, in another video. As number five, we have the type of conductor cables to be used with their mechanical characteristics. As number six component, we have the sag of the conductor cables in maximum wind conditions or maximum load conditions average temperature which uh, with the wind at maximum temperature uh, this maximum temperature does not refer to the maximum temperature for vertical clearances calculations but uh, what I mean is the maximum temperature for swing calculations as number seven we have the horizontal clearances from conductors at swing position to the possible obstacles adjacent to the right away of the line. As number eight, we have the data of the vegetation adjacent to the transmission line alignment. And as number nine, we need a very good calculator. We go from the assumptions that we know in advance, those areas where by negotiations with line owners, the right away has been defined and in those areas so that uh, we have to calculate the rest of the sections uh, of the line where we don't have this type of uh, restrictions. As for the geometry of the suspension structures, there are different types of uh, structures in different heights or, or levels. Since um, it is impossible to know from the beginning the maximum height of the structures to be used in our project, it is advisable to consider the tallest structure. The necessary dimensions are the very basic ones. We only require the vertical and horizontal dimensions of the cross arms, and the rest of the geometry is necessary for calculations when paralleling other transmission lines. In this case, it is common to consider that the highest structure could collapse at the waist elevation and fall on top of the adjacent transmission line. On the other hand, the balancing effect is present on all types of uh, cables, but in addition to the swing on cables, it is necessary to consider the balancing of the hardware assemblies. In the case of uh, vertical suspensions assemblies, 
it is directly affected by the wind and subject to swing. So it will be necessary to have a complete assembly drawing indicating the dimensions of each component from the first shackle connected to the attachment plane on the structure to the conductor clamp. In order to obtain the conductor sack, we must first have the ruling span. So uh, we will quickly define this uh, term, which uh, we will talk later. At the beginning of a transmission line project, obviously there are no towers, no structures, no nothing. Therefore, we don't have uh, the spans between them. So we, we have to think of an average span or a representative one which uh, will serve for the initial calculations. Even though we have this rolling span, there will be smaller spans during the design of the line, but there will be also larger spans, which uh, is impossible to know them in advance. So uh, the larger the span, it means with the same uh, temperature, the larger the sack will be and in turn it will be the larger horizontal swing having as consequence that under certain loading conditions the conductor swings will be beyond the limits of the right away of the line therefore it is a good practice to add a percentage to the proposed uh, rolling span in order to compensate those spans which uh, could exceed this value. To obtain this sack, it is necessary to have the mechanical data of the conductor cable. There are two ways to obtain this data. As number one, some manufacturers have tensioning tables of their cables for different combinations of uh, temperatures and spans between structures. The disadvantage of these tables is that they don't consider the effects of uh, cable overloads uh, as they vary depending on the region or country where the cables are going to be installed. In addition to the requirements of the client uh, owner of the line. So let's say that these tables are basically for reference but not for calculation. As number two, perform a calculation of the parameter or catenary which uh, with the ruling span established previously will result in a more accurate sag uh, because uh, they take into consideration the load conditions which uh, the cable will be subject therefore it is highly recommended to carry out this study prior to the calculation of the right away it is necessary as well to calculate the swing of the cables to obtain the horizontal displacement. However, in addition to this calculation, the horizontal clearances to possible obstacles must be taken into account. Each country and each company owner of uh, transmission lines have this kind of uh, regulations for your reference. Finally, let's remember that a transmission line crosses uh, any type of terrain geography is very variated from uh, flat areas where there's no vegetation at all to areas where it can pass through very dense vegetation with uh, tall trees which uh, at some point could fell down on the cables of uh, our transmission lines so far we have seen or had an idea of the general philosophy for the calculation of the right of way I reiterate that uh, what we have seen here is uh, an explanation in a very general way since um, each transmission line project will have its own particularities since uh, the calculation philosophy depends on the regulations of each nation and the needs of each uh, line operator. But all what we have seen here above might pretty well give you the basic tools to adapt to your transmission line projects. My courses in uh, transmission line design will be available in my webpage in deeper detail. Thank you very much for your company, for your visit to this channel. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me your comments. So until next one, 
Transmission Lines Engineering TV, training to power the world.